Now being German, I, I can't use my hips. Yeah? So what I usually do is I have my 4x4, four four, yeah? and then at some point my arm comes in. Yeah? Hi, um, my name is Beate Peter. We are here at Juju's in East London today with Funzing and uh, I'm giving a talk on the psychology of raving. I think it's quite important that we talk about um, the perceived difference between the body and the mind and I'm trying to convince you that there is no difference really between the body and the mind. They, they interact quite nicely with one another and they inform one another. And then I need to hit you with a little bit of theory in order to build up my big argument. And so I'm going to talk about Carl Gustav Jung, Swiss psychologist, who, uh, who talked about the psyche in a, in, a, in a particular way, in a unique way that I find quite fitting for my, for my research, where he distinguishes between the conscious and the unconscious, but within the unconscious he talks about the collective unconscious, and that's the kind of thing that I want to get into today, the, the stuff that makes us all human, and the whole idea of trancing on the dance floor, a few external settings like the light and the music and the loudness of the music, but also how our mind experiences sensory overload and therefore electronic dance music being enabling kind of us to trance on the dance floor. And in the end we talk a little bit about kind of popular drugs of club culture and how every youth culture chooses a drug that kind of enhances the experience it's seeking out as here on stage. The more you suppress one thing, the more the thing that is suppressed wants to come out. And my proposal here is that trance is an opportunity for you to experience the whole psyche. Get this down. I'd like you to, uh, to start buying into my argument that maybe there's a connection that we tend to ignore quite often. When we talk about the body and the mind. In Western society, there's still a prevailing idea. This idea is informed by Descartes. What Descartes said is this kind of, um, there is this really extreme difference between the body and the mind. What I would like to suggest today is that if you just come along with me for a little bit, I'd like to argue that this dualism doesn't really exist, that this is such a strong connection between the body and the mind and they constantly inform each other. And in a way, it doesn't matter what is material and what is immaterial, because what we enter is something new. And maybe it's a question of rediscovering how to listen to ourselves. Maybe we've forgotten how to do that. My proposal here is that trance is an opportunity for you to experience the whole psyche. So let's take this into rave culture. We are referring to the original rave culture. So between 85 and 95 is when it's all kicked off in Britain. And rave traditionally, now within academia, it's referred to a particular period in time and it defines the events in a particular way. So we're talking about outdoor events that are not licensed, where you didn't necessarily have to pay admission, where you didn't have sniffer dogs, where you didn't have bouncers, um, and you would just party in a field, you would call a number from the phone booth um, to find out where you are going, and there's definitely a revival in rave culture. But what we are looking at today is club culture. I'm not judging this, I'm not saying it's better or worse. I do think there's something good in every kind of development and evolvement. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. What I'm saying is that your body can, can respond in various ways. And if you get into one of these energy surges and you start, you know, you are this freestyle of things, minus the word here, dance floor, you know, I'm all over, let's push them away with my moves. You might have a movement overload. And what that sometimes leads to is disorientation. You might not necessarily know anymore where the DJ is, where the sound is coming from, what the lights are doing. You might just, if you're really mad, look up or look into the strobes just to have the full-on experience and then start feeling sick. And of course, rave culture is a participatory culture. But of course, so for those of you who've been raving for a while, you will know what dancing the box is, or big fish, little fish. So, oh. 
but it still gives you relative freedom to do with your upper body whatever you want, and of course with your legs whatever you want. Um, something that is really conducive to my argument is that in, in rave culture you have no set song structure. And um, when, you look, when you look at um, popular music research in academia, um, people have looked at the dance floor forever and ever. And it's quite interesting because the dance floor itself has changed. Um, so for example, if, you t if we take the dance floor in a disco, you would usually step down or step up to the dance floor. Um, and you would hear the first few lines, the melody, whatever it is, you would recognize the song and you would decide, yeah, I want to go on the dance floor. And then the song would be over and you would stand there for a few seconds waiting for the next song and make a conscious decision again to stay on the dance floor or to leave the dance floor. But every time a song is over, you, you get back out of your mode and you need to really focus and concentrate and think, okay, that's a song I, I like, or, you know, oh no, that's, I don't know, Adele, there's a break in there, or better not dance, better not dance, I don't know when she comes back in. So, but in, in electronic dance music, because you have a DJ set that can last for hours, you don't ever have a break in which I have to make a decision. Hey guys, we're here with Funzing UK, and uh, today we're here with Beata Peter. Uh, just after a talk on the psychology of raving. Okay, so we have uh, one question for you from the audience that we had uh, today that we're going to ask you. How do you feel raving has changed over, over time, over sort of the time that raving has been around? And um, I guess just a little bit about your uh, research on that. Um, so I'm doing this project with the Labs Clubber because between 85 and 95 is when, it's all, when it all kicked off in Britain. And I think it started to establish a, a mental image and a memory about rave culture as we think about it today. It's like a popular image. But then the rave bill came in, it was termed the rave bill, it was the um, 1994 Criminal Justice and Public Order Act, and, um, and raves became illegal, um, but people still wanted to go dancing. So essentially raves moved into nightclubs, and with this change came, of course, a change in admission, so it was definitely, you know, sales, ticket sales, um, licensing laws, what kind of alcohol was sold, how long it was sold for, um, bouncers, queues, you know, pre-ticket sales. So all of this has changed rave culture massively. And I would say it, it's turned into what I would call club culture. Um, and people sometimes ask me if, if this culture has died or if rave culture has died. And I, and I would like to say that the spirit is definitely still there. So there will forever be people who would like to try something new and maybe it's time for a revival where you know people go outside of nightclubs again and try something different in arty spaces and empty spaces where it's about the music it's about people coming together not necessarily about making money and uh, it's still happening it's like really really interesting you can you can always tell the quality of a speaker by how well they answer questions at the end and the whole audience like got to ask every question they wanted and she was just on it like on it, on it, on it. And that's how you know like a really good speaker when they can just challenge down anything. Um, and yeah, she just was amazing, really. It was a really interesting event. I'm, I'm kind of really glad it went. Just saying that this has made me want to go to a rave. Maybe next weekend. <laughs> Maybe next um, weekend. No, I really enjoyed it too. And um, yeah, no, it was really, really great.